What's up YouTube, Stipe here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about why you should not buy the Jeep Grand Cherokee Tracker. Well, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it. I'm not saying it's a bad car or anything like that. I'm uh, more just saying it because of kind of value and price and uh, everything you're getting for it. So now, I mean, compared to other SUVs in its class that it's competing with, I mean, the Trackhawk is probably the fastest in its class. Um, and it's probably priced at about the right price for all of these uh, SUVs that are in its class. It's right around the right price and I don't think it's really priced wrong. The problem that I have with it is, is you probably shouldn't buy one brand new unless you're getting an excellent discount. Reason being is, um, they, they're gonna depreciate hard in that first year, two years, you'll take a huge hit in because it's such an expensive vehicle. But the problem is, is, I mean, even if you look at other thing, other cars in its class, like the Land Rovers, the Porsche, um, you'll see that even they take a pretty hard hit in that first year. The difference is, is on this car, you can lease it, or sorry, on this car, you cannot lease it. Um, you might be able to in the US, I'm not sure, but in Canada, you can't lease it. I don't think in the US you can lease it either. Um, and if you can, I'm sure it's not that attractive just yet. They probably will release something on it in the US, not here though in Canada. Um, but that's the other thing is people who buy these high-end SUVs that are expensive and fast are usually leasing it through a company or just leasing it on their own in their own name because it's still cheaper the payment than to finance one of these. Um, most of the people who are gonna buy this car here are probably gonna pay cash. And working at a dealership, I'll tell you right now, 98% of buyers do not pay cash. So, um, and I would say about 91% of buyers don't put any money down. So. It, it, it's just it's a tough situation for this and if you look here at the SRT Grand Cherokee it's the exact same it's the exact same vehicle I'm just gonna go around it here the biggest difference is the tailpipes I mean that's really significant on what you see different obviously the badging but without the badging it's hard to tell the yellow brakes are kind of a giveaway too but I mean if someone painted those yellow you probably would have no idea until you see the badging or it's debadged you really probably wouldn't be able to tell um, unless you really know a lot about the cars and then you might but I'm telling you right now that this is the way to go this still competes with everything in the class now it might not be the fastest car in the class the SRT however it does it is able to compete with everything and if you are a fan of the Grand Cherokee and liking it and everything go with this I mean it, if you're buying this Grand Cherokee chances are you're probably planning on driving it right it's gonna be more of a daily driver as opposed to let's say a Challenger Hellcat or a Charger Hellcat reason being is because it's more convenient it's four-door it's all-wheel drive you can drive it all year round um, and really have no major issues with it so you know what that means if you have a daily driver that um, that you want then chances are you're gonna look at things even like gas mileage and I know when you're people are gonna now comment oh if you're buying a car like that you won't care about gas mileage I understand that you probably gas mileage isn't your biggest priority if you are buying a car like this however you're gonna probably get double the gas mileage in the SRT as opposed to the track and the reason being is because the SRT has the MDS which shuts down to four cylinders and in my charger I have a 392 and that saves huge amount of gas. Now yes there's eco mode in that track hawk and stuff but it's still not nearly as beneficial as the eco mode in the SRT. So I'm telling you right now it is it's gonna be a lot better on gas the SRT as well. Um, that's kind of my main point here on why I would not go with this vehicle. I mean, once when the track hawk, you know, is used and dealerships have had them on their lot for quite some time and it's slowly starting to happen. I'm starting to see it and I'm sure I'm going to have a couple customers who are going to want to trade theirs in um, and they'll be sitting on our lots for probably, I don't know, 30 to 40 grand less than the window sticker. So 
I mean, in the US, it might be like 30 to 25, but here in Canada, you're looking at 30 to 40 grand less. And that's crazy. I mean, to take that big of a hit on a car that, I mean, you're not leasing um, and you're not giving back at the end of the term, you have to swallow that 40 grand that you just lost. So keep in mind uh, that that's huge. Now, obviously the SRT is gonna depreciate as well probably at the same percentage but I mean just because the SRT is about 40 to 30 grand less you're gonna you're going to save quite a bit when that curve happens of depreciation you'll maybe lose out on you know let's say 20 to 15 grand as opposed to um, you know 40 30 right so that's my video for today guys um, Please tell me what you guys think. I mean, I'm not saying by any means it's not worth it. I mean, for what you're getting for your money in its class, it's definitely good. But I don't think it's going to be a hot seller just because of this reason. And I kind of did a video on why the Trackhawk isn't selling. Another reason is because, yeah, you don't have the benefit to lease a car this high end um, with us here at Jeep. And it's unfortunate. Um, and I think that that's another reason why the Trackhawk is struggling. So please let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with more videos.